I got the saw blade prepped. I painted it the other day, let it cure out some uh, rattle can, just something so that my paint can stick to, rather than this little rusty area because, uh, you know, that's just, uh, that's not gonna work all that well. So, got some rust only in black, uh, knocked it down with some scotch bright, gave it some nice little edges for my paint to bite. I got the reference art loaded up on a computer and, it's going to be a nice, uh, like a sunrise, uh, dawn, misty kind of looking thing. So uh, that's what we're going to do right now is the mist. Um, I have two tape marks. I have a tape mark here and a tape mark way back here. These are the, This is where my stencil is going to ride. So I, I want to get close to that. But I don't want to really encroach on it all that much because in the final product, I want this to be a nice blend from the artwork into this black and then into the patina, if you want to call it that. So uh, let's uh, let's put some some misty sunrise stuffs in there. All right, judging by how spotty that's coming out, I'm gonna say I gotta up the air pressure a little bit. So the overall mood behind this piece, I know I haven't talked about this before, but uh, the overall mood behind this piece is going to be cold. So whites, grays, and blues are what we're going to pretty much be using in order to create the illusion of temperature. I learned that from photography class. All right, I'm gonna let that cure for a second or two and uh, mix up a little bit of white and I'm gonna tone it down this time uh, with a little bit of gray, maybe a Scotia black. So let's let that cure. All right, while you guys weren't paying attention, I went ahead and went back over this with a little bit of gray, knocked it down a little bit. And then that way when we do the next layer, we can have it just a little deeper gray and it's gonna keep carrying the illusion of our cold winter morning with a little mist or something there, right? So we're gonna let this cure, and then we're gonna put our stencils on and we're gonna start adding something to this so it doesn't look like a center-weighted white gradient. Did a little bit of tweaking to the stencil, um, extended it just so that we don't have any issues that look like it was stenciled. got done putting a little bit of darkness into this and uh, it's time to peel stencils so I'm gonna peel off what you see here and see what we got underneath hopefully it looks like something All right, so there we go. We got the uh, we get the stencil off, and uh, now it's time to put another stencil on. This is going to be the deer, the outline of the deer, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this one on, get it all centered up, and uh, then we're going to have some fun with that. 
All right, so now I got just a uh, regular straight black mixed up in the airbrush. I'm gonna fill in the uh, fill in the blanks here. Um, right after this. So I just noticed that uh, this little guy here, I want him to be on the back side of the hill. So I have to come back in with a little bit of tape and I'm going to have to tape, tape that off, fix it, make it look, uh, make it look right. So I thought I was ready to spray and uh, upon further inspection, I realized that it wasn't quite time. So, uh, you know, this can happen to everybody. So just always be... Always be paying attention. Yeah. Remember, airbrushing is 90% masking, 10% paint. And now, time for my favorite part, highlights. So, this little spot right here, the X, that's going to represent our sun or our light source. Hoping that it's going to be behind the trees because that's where I want the light source to come from. But anyways, uh, we got the light source picked out. And then uh, I'm going to add highlights to all the... Uh, the deer. So I got the uh, the wicked detail white thinned down and uh, it's a little thicker than the consistency of skin milk. So hopefully the tip dry is not going to be uh, a monster today. So there you go. Uh, I peeled off the mask after I did all the highlights, and this is what you get. Not bad. Pretty quick, but I feel like that uh, does okay. But that's not what I'm going for. So I'm going to take the white, and I'm going to add a little bit of mist in there, and that's going to tie everything together. So I still got a little bit of white left over. From a little distance back, I'm going to just kind of mist everything on there, right? The stuff that is further back in the painting should have more mist on it than the stuff that is closer in the painting, right? So there you go. Um, normally in a situation like this, I'd go back over it and I'd draw down the shadows. I'd put some more black on it, bring out the highlights and stuff like that to increase the amount of contrast in it. However... That's not what I'm going for in this painting. I want it to be blurry. I want there to be almost no contrast. I want it to be a cold, misty, almost rainy kind of miserable day. But miserable day with this beautiful amount of wildlife also in the picture. So it's, that is the contrast, is the subject, not necessarily the painting itself. I hope you enjoyed this, painting some mist. So as always, subscribe if you haven't already, like us on Facebook, and uh, see you on the next one. So here we are. It's the next morning. Um, not for you guys, it's the same video. But uh, for me, in real time, it's the next morning. I've let this thing clear. I've let this thing cure overnight.
And this morning, uh, I put on the Createx gloss top coat, and it meshed, it, it blended all the colors together, just just so pretty. So it, uh, it looks a lot different now today than it did last night. So let me get out of the way, and you can uh, get an eyeful of this. So what, are you still watching? Go, go paint something. Go paint everything. Go, just, just go paint. Go do it. Go, go now.